Mic check, check one, two, mic check, mic check. Okay, it works. Hello, hello. Sorry for the technical delay there. <laughs> My bad, it's just something came up, but hello, hello. Welcome again to Light the Way, the visual novel fan game for Luxium. Do I need any more introduction? Well, I suppose it's just some basics. So, I would just like you, to, you guys to know that what happened was that when I ended the stream last time, it kind of crashed before I could save it. So, just, re I, you know, I did all the same decisions, but I had really had to, you know, just speed through the rest of the things that we already went through on stream. But don't worry, nothing has changed. Hopefully, anyway. I did it to the best of my memory. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. Anyway, without further ado, let us do this. Okay, okay, okay. I look outside the taxi. Is that outside the taxi? I can do this. I can read. I promise. <laughs> Okay, I look outside the taxi window as the city's view passes me by. The springtime brings a refreshing atmosphere amidst the usual hustle and bustle of the city. I smile, but I'm not sure if it's because of that or... My smile grows a little wider as I glance at the golden card Luca gave me the day before, now clutched tightly in my hand. I can't wait to see what Luca has planned for today. Anyway, just uh, hold on a minute guys. Let me just do something real quick. Just in case there's any more technical issues, I'ma just put something in the background just to make sure I can check stream. All right, make sure I'm still streaming and all that. <laughs> Don't want any more technical mishaps. No, sir, no, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. okay, okay. Yep, everything is good so far. Yep, everything is good so far, alright? Okay, okay. Perfecto. Perfecto mundo. The mundo is perfecto. And other words to use, probably, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. Just setting things up a bit. Yep, that should be good. Okay, let's continue then, shall we? I step out of the taxi, greeted by the towering building. A sound of wonder escapes my lips as I observe my surroundings. Everything seems to be lined with pure gold, sparkling as if brushed with a layer of diamond. Probably not real golden diamond though, or else that's a one expensive building. Imagine if every brick, every tile in the building is laced with golden diamond. Sheesh, that's expensive. At the very least, it's not pure diamond, just something that looks like golden diamonds, because it's expensive if it's the real thing, you know? Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> how elegant and sophisticated. I wonder how much it costs to live here. And it smells so nice too. Pine and cedar. It's like I'm strolling through a forest. Uh, can I help you? Oh god, did he see me smelling the building? We were smelling the building? Okay. Wow, well, sure. Smell the building, why not? <laughs> <clears throat> I clear my throat and attempt to compose myself and face the guard, letting him see the gold card engraved with Luca's name. Hi, I was invited by Luca. Oh, a friend of boss? Head on in then. He's already waiting on the upper floor. Oh, thank you. Ooh, fancy, ain't it? I take the elevator to the 16th floor, as instructed by Luca. Scanning the card, I enter the apartment. I am greeted with the same smell, as well as the sound of water running in the background. The place looks so fancy on the outside, but it's more lively inside than you'd expect. Posters hanging on the wall, neon signs with the word POG, of course. Ah, is that Pogfish Luca mentioned he drew? I show the yellow fish hanging on the wall. This place is so neat. Oh, but why isn't there a Pogfish in the picture itself, though? That's a shame. Anyway. <laughs> The place is so neat, too. Books are placed orderly on the bookshelves, and there isn't a sign of thrash anywhere. I didn't expect Luca to be a reader, but the book looks untouched, so yeah, probably not a elite reader then if the books are untouched. I hear a faint rustle outside around... I, I'll re I can read it again. I, can, I hear a faint rustle around the room. There we go. Luke. <clears throat> 
Get ready for my underwhelming look impression then. <clears throat> Hello, Zero, is that you? Uh, yes. I'll be out in a minute. I'll be right there. I'll be waiting. Mommy? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what's up with the name there? Mommy? Question mark, question mark. Sure, sure, pal. Whatever you want, Valiance. Oh, you must be the great Luke. The ah, uh, I can read it. Okay. Oh, you must be the guest Luca mentioned. She looks beautiful. Who is she? She looks very similar to Luca. Oh, how rude of me! I'm Lucy, Luca's twin sister. Uh, hello, I'm the Lion's hero. Nice to meet you, Lucy. Ah, the pleasure is mine. Sorry if this sounds weird, but have we met before? Huh? No, I don't think so. I'd remember if I've met someone as pretty as you. <laughs> Aren't you just an adorable little thing? Luca! Don't make your cute special guest wait! Lucy! <laughs> Bye, Valiant Zero. It's a pleasure meeting you. Please take care of my brother. Oh, um... Bye? Lucy leaves the apartment with a large gym bag on her shoulder. Luca glares at the door she had shut behind her before turning to me with a bright smile. What were you guys doing before I got here? <laughs> we're just working out! It's something Lucy and I do on a regular basis. That sounds cool, and very productive of you. The thought of Luca being so close to his family warms my heart. It's cute how this is something he looks forward to as a tradition. I can tell that Luca really cares for his sister. Yeah, thanks. We didn't get to do much today, though. Oh, really? Why is that? What do you guys do normally? Uh, it's not much as you think. We mainly do rotations, arms, legs, and chest. Well, yeah, chest definitely right there. <laughs> I'm impressed. I can barely do push-ups without wanting to take a nap underground. Luca's hobby seems to be working out for him pretty well. I can't help but steal a glance at his arms and chest. Yes, you definitely can't help it, can you? We're normally done with our workout. <clears throat> We're normally done with our workout by this hour, but I uh, woke up a little later than usual today. What time did you get up this morning? Like 7 a.m. I think. I furrow my brows. That's late for him. <laughs> I can't help but wonder what his usual routine in the morning is. How late are we talking? By 30 minutes? Uh, oh, I'm usually up by 4.30. Dot, dot, dot. Do you have something against a good night's rest, Luca? <laughs> I was doing some extra work last night, but it was intentional, I promise. If anything, I think my light workout tired me out. I hope I can still make it through the day, though. I want to be at my best while spending the day with you. My cheeks flare, but the smile on my lips remain. <laughs> Must not be much of a workout for you then, huh? You don't seem tired at all. Let's see. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Not true. I'm still ready for more even with my asthma. Hold the phone. You have asthma? Luca just gives a smile, ignoring my question and signals me to follow him. We turn the corner into the living room. There's a treadmill in the middle. Uh, do you want to give it a try? Uh, no, no. It's alright. You can go ahead. He gives me a firm nod and presses a button to turn on the machine. After a few beeps, Lucas steps onto the belt and begins jogging. <laughs> it's kinda slow. Hmm? What do you mean? You're literally running. What level is it on? It's on level 8. Luca! Luca cackles wickedly and increases the speed. With every step you take, it makes a heavy thud against the machine. We got a super soldier here on our ranks, ah huh, boys? <laughs> Definitely a super soldier. Can't convince me otherwise. How can he possibly rival a track runner with how fast? Oh, he can probably rival a track runner with how fast he's moving. After a few minutes, he swiftly steps off the conveyor belt and turns the treadmill off. His skin is glistening with sweat. Wow, Luca, you sure worked up a sweat. You've got so much muscle, too. Luca's face lights up. He reaches out and grasps my hand. I was confused at first until he presses my palm against his chest. Yes, sir! Let's go! The shirt damp with sweat. <laughs> Thanks, but why zero? Feel how my heart is racing right now. My heart's going crazy too, Luca. It's pretty loud too. Listen. Luca places his hat back the back of my neck. 
places his hand to the back of my neck and pulls me into his body. My ear presses against his chest. <laughs> oh, why am I like this, Luca? Okay. I feel the vibrations of Luca's chuckle as he speaks above me. The sporadic beat of his heart, like the bass line to a song. It sounds nice. Really nice. <laughs> Alright, I have my workout. Good job again, Luca. Yeah. Yes, you know my nice hero. No pressure or anything, but you really don't want to try this? It's a really good workout with so many benefits. It helps keep your heart healthy, for example. I'm more of a couch potato, though. Oh, Luca's sad puppy eyes are staring at me. This move is illegal and should put him straight to jail. Luca, stop. Hmm? Stop what? Not making me want to give it a try. Oh, you're actually trying it after all? Why is he intensifying the puppy eye look? Oh, I can't help it. Fine, but I'm doing this because it's you. Please help me out and don't make me do level 8 or higher. <laughs> Luca laughs a bit at the end and smiles brightly. Of course, I'm not an inhuman, lies Zero. We'll do it at your pace and get you used to, and get you used to this, all right? Oh, and if you get into this, we could work out together in the future with Lucy. That would be Pog. Uh, maybe not with her. After think about it, she would tease me and stuff. Well, first of all, we need to see that and I survive this. We need to see that I survive this. Sorry, my reading comprehension skills not coming clutch for me today, is it? <laughs> Of course, I won't force you to do anything you don't want to do. First, we start off with a light workout to make sure I don't hurt myself on the treadmill. This is already exhausting. I want to quit, but I won't. For Luca! After that, he starts explaining the machine's mechanisms, specifically the different buttons that we will use and what monitor will show. You can hold these bars while running at your own tempo, then you can see how fast your heart is beating here. Wait, this is actually so cool. I know, right? Super Pog! Let's start to increase the level slowly to find what's most comfortable for you. Sounds like a plan I can follow. I push the button and choose level 1. The treadmill starts to move very slowly. This level is very slow. You can use this or level 2 as a way to cool down after working your body. Wait, why do I need to do that after my workout? Can I just stop and lay down? No, no, no! That's actually very dangerous for Lion Zero. Hoping that he elaborates further, I look at Luca in confusion while turning the treadmill to level 2. You see, when you suddenly stop running, you can get EAC. That doesn't help a person who knows nothing, almost nothing about exercising. Oops, sorry. EAC is sort for Exercise Associated Collapse. It's when you stop instantly without cooling down. The muscles of the extremities stop pumping blood to your heart and pulling the ex in those extremities. Oh, please remind me to do that later, Luca. <laughs> Don't worry, Eli Zero. As long as I'm here, you'll always be on the safe side. The smile is reassuring. Words calm me down before the real workout has even started. Alright, let's keep this ball rolling then. Yup, but first let's do a 5 minute warm up. Let's stay on this level for that, okay? Okay, I can do this. That's the spirit! Let's go! I walk for 5 minutes and after that, we amp the levels until I, we have a nice jogging pace. This actually doesn't feel too bad! <laughs> That's good to know! Keep going, Blind Zero! Yeah! I can definitely do this! Wrong! I overestimate my body that isn't used to working out for so long. Or at all. Come on, Blind Zero! I know you can do this! Only a few minutes left till you can cool down! Oh my god, I forgot about that part! I can feel myself sweating profusely, heaving my breath as I feel a pad to my back. The lies hero, you were Pog! Now go get yourself a good shower! But... I didn't bring you a spare change of clothes! Oh, don't worry, I got this! With a boisterous laugh, Luca goes into a room, and he quickly comes back and throws me a set of clothes. A bright blush suddenly appears on my face as the realization dawns on me. Wait, wait! Aren't these your clothes? Yeah, so? Uh, are you sure? Yeah, totally! Now come on! Ah! Despite my flustered look, Luca takes my hand and brings me to this large bathroom to shower. Alright, here's my awesome shower! I recommend taking a cold shower after a workout, since your body got really heated up in your session. Oh, Luca, wait! You'll get how the shower works on your own. I believe in you, Lady. <clears throat> 
Reading comprehension failing me again, huh? You get to you. I can do this. I can do this. I can read. Let's go. You'll get how the shower works on your own. I believe in you. Way to realize zero. And before I knew it, Luca closes the door on me. God damn it, Luca. Oh well, I guess I should just treat myself to a nice, relaxing shower. I end up taking a shower in the bathroom. It feels a little odd considering how rich this whole place looks. It's not something I'm used to. After the shower, Luca gets in to take his. Pog! That's my turn to get clean! Be back in a bit! Oh! Yeah! I'll see you later! I begin to wander around Luca's apartment to keep myself composed. Seriously, how can he not get embarrassed about this whole situation? I know, maybe you're overthinking this whole situation, Reliance. That's always a possibility. Or maybe I'm too worked up by this. Yeah, I'm sure it's just that. There's nothing wrong with showering at your boss's place. This shampoo scent clinging to you. And especially nothing wrong with wearing his clothes. Yep, there's nothing wrong about that, totally. There's nothing wrong about wearing your boss's clothes. Definitely nothing wrong with there, pal. I shouldn't have thought that. I sighted myself as I opened the door, revealing a semi-made king-size bed. It was placed under a wide window frame, a wide window framed by red curtains, displaying the view from the top floor. On the bed are a wide variety of yellow, brown, and white pillows, as per Luca's style, as seen here. Let me take a screenshot of that real quick. There we go, Luca's room in daytime. A lion plushie that looks strangely familiar sits comfortably on one of the pillows. Hello, Augustus! That plushie looks really familiar. Where have I seen it? More posters and neon signs line the walls. A recorder lies next to the pillows. I can almost imagine Luca sleeping on the bed, one arm wrapped around the plushie. Luca really likes these posters and lights. Hmm. And another pogfish? Does he play the recorder too? <laughs> <laughs> How cute. I'm back! Sorry I kept you waiting. I turn around to see Luca grinning at me as he walks into the room, fresh from his shower. Also, forgot to mention it, but good job on the treadmill. You did great for a beginner. <laughs> Thanks. Despite me feeling like I was about to die, I think I do feel healthier. Pog! If you don't mind me asking, if you have asthma, why are you doing such intense workouts? I had a friend growing up who made it their mission to be the fastest runner at school. I liked to compete with them so we'd race each other constantly. My asthma was a problem since even jogging once ball was enough to make me feel winded. I decided to start training my body so that I won't have to constantly rely on my inhaler. <laughs> You're pretty cool, Luca. Did you beat your friend? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I have a challenge into a race in forever. Well, if you do, if you do, I'll be rooting for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I see you find my little corner there with all my stuff. Yeah, your pet lion guards the area pretty well. That's Augustus, my trusty confidant. Lucas shakes his head, a little to dry his hair, sending water droplets flying around him like a gold retriever that he is. I suddenly giggle after imagining Augustus doing the same thing and how alike they look. Hey, what are you giggling? <laughs> Nothing. I just think that the cute little guy suits you. <laughs> Well, I guess you can say Augustus is like the, bur the burro to my curse. I don't get a reference, but sure. Oh? Yeah, it fits, you know, since it's my favorite movie. Actually, since we're looking for something to do, wanna watch it? Sure, that sounds fun. Great! I'll, I'll go set it up real quick. Just make yourself comfy next to Augustus so he doesn't bite. Here? Are you sure it's okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. On his bed? But that's his personal space. Should I? Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> Accept. <laughs> All right. Sure. Uh, thank you. Well, you seem guests should be comfortable, right? Well, you're quite the gentleman. Of course, of course. Wait, let me just clear it a bit here. I can see that Luca probably doesn't mind, nor does he notice my blush. I guess it's a good thing he can be a little dense sometimes. Ooh, close up of the bed. Luca kindly sets aside some of his stuff to make room for me. I lay back a little against the pillows on one side of the bed. 
After he finishes setting up the television and the movie starts playing, he plops down comfortably on the spot next to me. Augustus sits between us, but Luca and I are close enough that our shoulders are almost touching, okay. Fact that gets, well, just a little more distracting as the minutes pass. As the minutes pass. There, I, I, I pronounced path a little weirdly there. Okay, my Zero, just focus on the movie. Remember, you've met Luca's most trustworthy companion, and he's guarding you too. Oh, the legendary layer scene. I love this part. I think I remember this. Ogres of layers and donkeys don't, right? Yeah, and they become best friends. They didn't change who they are just to please the other person. They accepted them, differences and all. Ain't that sweet for Shrek? It's part of why Curse is my favorite. I just wish everyone could experience something like that. You know, I don't know though. It's probably a childish thought. Aw, oh, it's not, Luca, it's not. Luca looks sad all of a sudden. This might be a vulnerable topic for him, so I'd best be careful with what I say. What approach should I take? Be hopeful, of course! <laughs> don't worry, it's not childish, I agree with you. Everyone does deserve to feel like they can be themselves freely and be loved instead of judged for it, including you. Huh. Thanks, Alliance Hero. I didn't understand, and I could say the same for you. Luca's eyes meet mine again, and I get lost in their genuine sincerity for a moment. How could anyone want him to change? Why would they make him feel that way about himself? It pays me to even think about it. Yeah, you're perfect how you are, boss. Well, back to the movie. Oh, I'm not sure Curtis would like how sappy we're getting. Maybe Buro would? Oh my god, you're right! <laughs> Luca, a first guess, especially with that charismatic cheerfulness of his, some might say he has it all. He seems to live a comfortable life on the outside, but does he feel the same way inside, I wonder? At some point, I feel a weight lean on my shoulder. I turn to see it's Luca's head. His eyes closed and his breathing is even. That's just adorable. <sighs> or something sleeping noises. Oh, it seems like Luca fell asleep while the movie's still on. What should I do? Nah, let him sleep. He must be tired. I should let him sleep. Oh, that is, okay, that's, that is screenshot worthy. That is adorbs. <clears throat> I put the blanket on Luca carefully. He snuggled into it. As I continue to watch his favorite movie, I, a smile finds its way into my face, knowing he lets me see a new side of him today. A few hours later... The Lion Zero? Luca stirs awake, and I watch as he winces at the brightness of the room. Did I fall asleep? His voice is deep and rough, not like the normal cheerful voice of Boss, more like how he might sound in the early mornings. You look like you needed it, so I thought it would be a good idea to let you rest for some time. I smile at him, and he smiles back. My entire body fills with warmth at the sight. Always as dazzling as a place he lives in. Luca takes my hand within both of his. Without his lavender eyes ever leaving mine, he presses a kiss to the back of my hand. Okay? I feel as if fireworks are exploding in my chest. I really appreciate it, Malign Zero. Ah, oh, that was good. Even though I've probably seen it around 1,587 times. That much? Yes, and I guess watching it with someone really makes it special and good. I can't be bothered to hide the upward tuck of my lips. I'm glad that Luca invited me over today. Happy that he shared something this close to his heart with me. I didn't notice the monitor dimly lighting Luca's room in the corner. I squinted the screen trying to make out what was what was on it from a distance. The Lion's Hero? What's the matter? Why are you staring? Instantly, I pulled my eyes away from the screen, blinking a couple of times before laughing awkwardly. <laughs> oh, no, it's nothing. <laughs> I was just looking at your computer. I'm sorry for snooping if there's anything confidential on it. That's alright, Boy Zero. That's just my gaming updating. My game updating? Oh, what games do you play? A variety, really. Like first person shooters, battle royale, open world, and endurance games. 
I really like this mountain climbing game called King of the Hill. It's a tricky game at first, isn't that the cartoon? I used to get so mad every time I failed to make it to the top fast enough, but now I'm basically a pro. The speedrunning game Luca describes to me is interesting and frustrating. I'm curious as to why it's his favorite. I take a closer look at the screen, no longer seeing the loading menu I had before. Is it finished? Yup! You wanna try? It might take a while for you to get to the top get it though, but I can teach you. Uh yeah, I'd love to. I bet on your pile for I'll do great on my first run. <laughs> I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. At my words, Luca's eyes twinkle with excitement. His lips upturned into a wide smile, showing off his pearly whites. I'm thrilled that I get to enjoy something else that makes Luca happy. I wasn't having a hard time with the controls since they were relatively simple to understand. However, I soon realized that this game is going to be much more difficult. I hope there isn't any fall damage in this. Don't let me die, okay? You don't have to worry about that. There isn't any. If there isn't any, and if there were, I'd make sure he'd survive. <laughs> it was good to have my very own knight in shining cotton. <laughs> you should pay attention or you'll fall. Just as this morning left his lips, my character in game plummets to the very beginning, spouting a random voice line about trying again. My heart drops in my chest, so much so for so much for doing great on my first try. Couldn't even get two feet off the ground. A pout warms its way onto my lips. It's okay. It probably took close to 30 minutes for me to get good. Well, let me help you. Be my guest. <laughs> Thank you, Luca. I think I'd go crazy if I had to do this by myself. It's no problem at all. Here, I'll show you. I sign on my head, relenting. I move my hand off the mouse so he can take a hold of it, but Luca places his hand on the back of mine. Now he's holding both of my hands and my, both my both my hand and the mouse. Okay, let's go, let's go. All you have to do is take your time. There's no need to rush. I really am trying my best. I don't know how you do it. Failure is just something that happens. It's not you. Each one can make you stronger and wiser. As he speaks over me, he effortlessly maneuvers the terrain. His voice sending vibrations through my body from how close he is. Okay. It's getting hard to pay attention to what's happening on the screen. Even if you don't succeed the first time, it's not a sign that you should give up. When what you're doing doesn't work, it just means a correction is needed, whether a huge detour or a small course change. Instead of trying to scale this building, you should go through these little obstacles on the right, so there's less room for you to fall, even if you miss grabbing onto one. Is that what you learned from starting up the cabaret? Business-wise, I mean, the thing about the failure. I look over my shoulder at Luca's face. He doesn't meet my eyes, only staring at the screen. There's no smile on his lips. I guess you can say that. You just got a free lesson in entrepreneurship, Belia Zero. Use this information wisely. Oh, it's nighttime already. <laughs> Look at the time. Uh, sorry, Valise Hero. I know I invite you today, but I forgot I have some stuff to do. Uh, no, no, it's okay, Luca. Thank you for inviting me anyways. I had fun. We've been having some quality time lately. I hope you're not tired of me yet. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed our time together. It feels like we've been doing this forever. You know, the feeling is mutual. Take care of your way home, Alliance Hero. Thank you, Luca. Have a good night. Eh, poster of Luca, because why not? Oh. Are there new posters? I don't think there are new posters, right? Let's check. That Vox, Fogger, Shu, Luca, Sunny, Noctix, Hugo, and Shu again. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new. A smile has been plastered on my face since I left Luca's apartment. Today really is a pleasant day. Luca is really easy to get along with. It might sound weird, but I feel like I've known him much longer than I actually do. I suppose that just happens when you get along really well with someone. Hey, Valine Zero, are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Why? Your face, it's all red. Is your work really that bad? Oh, no, no, no. Everybody there is really nice and today's my day off. Oh, okay. Tell me if you need something, all right? There's food in the fridge. Just heat it up. I'll be in the living room. Ah, oh, thank you. 
I relax in my bed as I do my nightly routine. I giggle to myself after seeing my plushies and remembering Augustus. Then it hit me. Oh my gosh, we have the same plushie? Yep. Flashback time. Luca, do we really need to keep racing? You have to use your inhaler after each one. Of course we do! I've been practicing! I have to beat you so we'll keep going until I do! But you're gonna run out of air! If we do, I'm not gonna go easy on you just because we're friends. Luca grumbles under his breath while pouting. He couldn't believe his friend thought he would need them to give him, an, to give him even a single victory. If you even think of slowing down during our race, I'll never forgive you, redacted. <laughs> I wasn't going to, don't worry. Good, I swear on my pogfish I'm going to beat you with my strength alone. Well, I hope you're still hungry because you're about to eat my dust again. Ready, go! Chapter 6, All In. I wake up to the sound of my roommate dropping dishes into the sink. As I open my bedroom door, the scent of pancakes blesses my nose. A screenshot. There we go. I look over at his plate, which is stacked tall with pancakes, and think about how lucky I am to have a roommate like him. He looks at me curiously as he heats, so, so I just smile. Morning. Hey, are you going to work today? Nope, so I can take my time to enjoy your god sent pancakes. I give him a bright grin and I return with a chuckle. My roommate stands up shaking his head. I'll go get another plate and fork. Plate? Plate and fork then. <laughs> Sounds good. A few minutes later, he returns with a plate of food in his hands. Please get down onto the dining table. I'm surprised you're still here. Hmm? What's that? Your boss just invite you to go out with him on your day off. Which, by the way, is super unprofessional. There isn't any malicious intent in his voice, and his face is as neutral as if he had just asked me to pass the butter, so I assume it was meant as a joke. Still, I'm taken aback by this statement. Before I know it, my roommate is getting up from the table to put his dirty dishes in the sink. Well, it's a good thing. Enjoy your day off, as you should. I'm going to get ready for work. The sound of the bathroom door closing makes my head ring. Rumi Chan is right. Luca has always gone out of his way to invite me to go out, even when we were nothing but strangers to each other. I've been so selfish and ungrateful. As I eat the last bit of my breakfast, I put my dishes into the sink to clean up and then make my way to my room. Luca's been on my mind the entire time. I bet he has. For once, I want to do something nice for him. So it makes me wonder what we can do together until an idea pops into my head. Immediately, I fish for my phone from in between the bed sheets, bed sheets, not bed sheets, that's a different thing, and dial Luca's phone number. It takes a while before he answers the call. Oh, the Lion's Hero! This is a surprise! Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, I just want to give you a call. Oh, how come? Did something happen? I nod my head even though he can't see me, making me look just as ridiculous as I feel. Nothing happened, don't worry. I was just thinking that you were always the one inviting me out to have fun. And you go out of your way to ensure that I have a good time. So I wanted to do the same for you. Aw, that's nice of you, Valise Hero. Thank you. Did you have something in mind for us to do? My mind goes blank. I didn't think I would get this far. <laughs> I rack my brain for something we both can do that isn't too out there and a danger to my wallet. I don't want Luca to lift a finger and not even his pinky toe. I scan my room for inspiration as he patiently waits for my response on the other side of the phone. My eyes soon fall upon my, upon, onto my telescope that I bought with me when I moved into this apartment. Living in the city wasn't ideal for stargazing, but I found that the lights from the buildings outside didn't hinder my ability to do so. I smile brightly. Uh, let's go on a camping trip! Just like that, huh? With the no preparation, no nothing? Alright. A camping trip? Is it too last minute? It's spontaneous, that's for sure. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to lift a finger other than driving to the campsite, of course. My family used to go on one every year before I moved. It was around this time, too. I have my equipment and everything still. I'll bring it and we'll have fun together. I'm in. I won't leave you to do all the work, though. 
I'll see if I can have anything I can. I'll see if I have anything I can bring as well. I want to help a little bit. <laughs> I'll see if Shu or Miss has camping gear I can borrow. My heart flutters at Luca's acceptance and eagerness to go. His own excitement radiates through the fold and washes over me as well. Thank you, Luca. No, Valai Zero, thank you for inviting me. I have to go now. We'll talk again later, alright? I'll pick you up and you can direct me where to go. Sounds good. Okay. Save. The same the same part from the flashbacks. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Now I'll be right back, by the way. I just need a drink of water because my throat's getting a bit uh, tired. Okay, I'll be right back. BRB. Okay, okay, I'm back. Guess who's back? Back again. All right, let's do this. It has been a long time since I last spent and spent time in the great outdoors. The air seems fresher and the skies appear a more brilliant blue. Whether it was due to my surroundings or because of Luca's presence next to me, which made everything seem so much more beautiful, I'm not sure. Luca is as energetic as ever on the hike. I was huffing and puffing, but Luca never slowed down, even though we're both sweating from the rough terrain. Ah! Luca? What's was wrong? God, I hate spiders! Why do they have so many legs? That is joking. So they can wear lots of socks? Luca gives me an amused chuckle. <laughs> oh, you're funny. I thank you, I think. No, but the thought of having a dozen love legs crawling over me is really gross. I don't know how you keep your cool when we see them. Well, I'm not a real I'm not really a fan of it either, but I do find them cool. You know, when you suggested we go camping, it was expecting a nice clear cabin in a lake. Not the outback of Australia. Nature has its ups and downs, but I guarantee it's all going to be uphill from here. Alright, I trust you. So, what's your favorite thing about camping? I don't know. I guess just the opportunity to get away from everything and just enjoy being outdoors. Anyway, let's go find a good spot to set up camp and leave the spiders home be. They aren't very good hosts anyway. Shoo, shoo! Does he think it's... Does he think it's like... He is... Uh, I can read this. Does he think it's like a dog? <laughs> I can't help but laugh. But sure enough, it scoots away. Okay, maybe I'm the fool. How could you be so calm right now? Did you see? Did you say you hate bugs? Well, spiders are andropods. It's totally different. They're so cool. I wish I could spin webs with my non-existent spinnerets. Why? So you can trap and keep me all to yourself? I... No. What I'm saying is that they're not our enemy unless we make them one. We look around as we walk further up to the ground, and on serious nose, I freaking hate spiders, they terrify me. There is a lake in the distance, a fire pit, and enough space for the two of us to set up and relax. Overall, the space was prepared well. <laughs> Check this out. Seems like this spot is a regular place for camping. They've got stuff for us to do. They've got stuff for us to do. Let's see, a frisbee, butterfly nest, fishing poles. Have you ever fished before the Lion's Hero? 
not since I was a kid. The one time I tried, I kept poking my finger with the hook. Ouch. After that, I just hung around when we went on fishing trips. But did you catch any fish? Yeah, three, but they weren't very big. Well, I happen to be an expert fisherman. Every fish I catch, I guarantee it will be at least 20 pounds. We can eat the ones I catch for the ultimate camping experience. Oh, that's generous of you, Luca. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. There's no doubt in my mind that Luca's the kindest man I know. Even when he came down to helping me put a bait on the hook. The dock was a decent in size, enough for us to walk side by side with room left over. Our gear is ready, we sit down and let the rods fly. For a few moments, there is the peaceful stillness of doing something with someone. It's absolutely breathtaking, watching the sun fall on his face. But Luca, the scenery looks picturesque as if he belongs there. Did you know that some people fish with spears? No way! So they just stab the fish? That actually sounds pretty pog! Right? And then there's ice fishing. For someone who hasn't fished in a while, you sure know a lot. Not as much as I like the idea of doing it with you. What? Yeah, I thought it would be super fun to go fishing with you. What? Don't you want to? Of course I do! What do you mean? You seem a little flustered, that's all. Shut up! Well, there, shut up. well there are so many responses I can make, each more daring than the last. I settle for laughter. No, don't settle for laughter! Okay, loud, raucous laughter, enough to scare the fish before we can even cast our lines. My stomach hurts by the time I'm done, and Luca's face is still tinted red. You're so mean, Alliance Hero. We're both the bad guys here. If you look at it from the fish's point of view, eating them with food before I poke them, got them, and eat them. You're not as you're not as much of a bad guy as you think, Alliance Hero. <laughs> that isn't bad to you? <laughs> not really. If it's the if this is the worst thing you've done today, then I say you're pretty all right. A few minutes patiently waiting for what felt like forever, I feel a heavy tug on the pole of the pole in my hands. Maybe it was because we'd been so quiet for so long. Oh man, hey Luca, I think I got something. It's still a little hook. Whoa, it's really strong. You got it? It's fine, I'm fine. Are you sure? Show him you've got this. No, no, it's alright, I got this. If I let him help, you just take the rod from me, right? And I want to impress him so much. Alright, alright, go for it, Velaz Hero, you got it. The pull of the fish straining my arms is especially draining as you can't exactly fight against water. My arms burn with the effort, but then the fish begins to fight back. And I need to work out? Why are all these fishes so buff? Do they do their fin ups? Boo! That was awful! Don't be mad, they're so fin dependent! Get off the stage! Okay, okay, I'm done, I'm finished! You're so ridiculous, you know that? And what does that say about you? You were laughing at my joke! One minute I'm laughing at Luca, the next I'm being yanked into a lake. I yell, lose my lips as I feel the sheer cold of the water surrounding my body. Luca helps me out of water on the verge of doubling over in laughter. I don't feel so bad about losing the pole. <laughs> Sorry, Luca. I lost our dinner. You put up a good fight, no worries! The fish won, though. It's okay, we'll just have to come back and try again. We'll definitely get it next time. I'll catch the fish for us tonight. Alright. Ooh, pretty. Did it save? I'm not sure the screenshot saved. There we go. We both wash up after fishing, changing into our pajamas. The sun has set and I begin to hear the sounds of the insects. For, our, for a campground as fancy as this, it seems odd that we haven't run into everybody else. Our great for though, is it, is it open? Is it meant to be a campground? Or are we trespassing? Anyway, I rummage through my bag from a telescope that I disassembled a bit to fit in. To fit it in. I was hoping that I would be able to show off some of consolations to Luca, so I decided to take it with me. By the time I made my way back to the campfire, Luca had already finished cleaning the fish we caught and started cooking. I don't know if I lost track of time while changing, or he's just that good with a knife. Have a seat, I was done over here. Are you sure you don't want any help? Yeah, just relax, Live Zero. I take a seat and get comfy in the chair. 
I then begin to reassemble my telescope and set it up right next to me. Do you like to cook, Luca? You seem to be really good at it. Yeah, I do. I could make a decent meal fit for a cabaret. I usually clean up during the food prep too, so I know there won't be a big mess later. So you like to clean too? Or you just like things clean since I guess there's a difference. Hmm, both? It's relaxing to clean up, but it bothers me when there's a mess. Because of that, my sister begins to call me the perfect male wife. I can see you as a house husband. But I leave my house, so I can't be a house husband. There's a difference. You know what? Sure, why not? You don't sound like you believe me. I don't. I mean, I do believe you. It sounds like you're questioning me, a true male wife. You're a male girlfriend until someone puts a ring on it. Those are the rules. Alright, alright. But the way the food's done... By the way, the food's done. I made a fish sandwich, so what do you want to drink, Lion Zero? What are my options? Fruit punch, soda, beer, and water. Uh... I don't know, fruit punch, I guess. Some fruit punch, please. Coming right up. He grabs two bottles of fruit punch and hands, me, hands one to me. He lifts the other one down in the cup holder in the chair next to me. Then he strains up where he prepped and cooked before picking up the foil the food was wrapped in. Luca makes his way back towards me and sits on his own chair. Wow, looks so good, Luca. Your mouth's practically watering from the smell alone. <laughs> Thanks, Lion Zero. I think turning it into a fish sandwich was a great idea instead of just eating the fish by itself. Let me try a bite first. He lifts the sandwich to his mouth, takes a large bite out of it, and shakes fill out on the sides, resembling that of a chipmunk. <laughs> that actually sounds adorable. Though, no, since we were outside, I wouldn't put it past it if the chipmunks run past us right now. Hmm, not bad, not bad. All right, Valens Hero, open up. Are you serious? Yes, yeah, really good. Aren't you hungry? Here, take a bite. Okay, then. Ah, uh, even though I have my own sandwich on my lap that's so warm, I humor Luca and reach across my armrest of my chair to take a bite out of his. My bite was significantly smaller than his though. Hopefully the fish he cooked was enough for him to make several sandwiches or else he was be going hungry. Luca face li Luca's face lights up as he enjoys the taste of his dinner. As he pulls away, from away his food from his mouth, I notice the corner of his lips smudge with whatever sauce he has in his fish sandwich. Luca seems to not notice it at all, so I take the liberty and reach across my seat to wipe his lips with my thumb. Alright, what are you doing? You had sauce in your mouth, just cling it up. Oh, <laughs> thanks. You're a messy eater, Luca. I'm not, it just tastes so good, I can't help but devour it all. It does, you're also a great cook. I rate this a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you, Grandmaster Chef Alliance Hero. It's an honor to be acknowledged by you. It was a good meal, filling and warm, and more days that were a ways than one. We get up, stretch, and chat as the night begins to fall. As the sounds of nature gets a bit louder, the stars begin to appear in the sky. It looks like it was ripped straight out of a postcard, and it feels as if Lucas' luck has also rubbed off on me. We sit near the tent, the air around us starting to get cooler. I lean against him, the two of us silent for a while until he speaks. You know... I keep having this bad dream. Everything's normal except me. I'll turn into a zombie. I'm just so damn slow. My body just starts falling apart and I can barely move. It's so hard to breathe and I couldn't take care of anyone. People just baby me, feel sorry for me, and stitch me up, stitch me back together like I'm some rag doll. What's the worst part? All of it. There's no way for it to get any better, and there was no way for me to protect anyone. It was just useless. Nah. I don't really dream that often, but what I do, I don't remember what happens, as if I've never dreamt at all. I can't really put myself in your shoes exactly. Mostly because your feet are way bigger than mine. But even if you were slow and falling apart, it would be hard for me to say that you are useless from what I know of you. Beating people, having them believe in you, that's not a skill everyone has. A leader who isn't any good at what he does isn't worth a grain of salt. What good is a leader that can't do anything? Are people supposed to listen to me just because I say so? Not at all. Why do you like lying so much? 
It's always been a thing in our family. But they're proud, strong creatures. Like you. Like... Yes, with big fluffy manes. It's easy to see what... That you're the type of person who cares deeply for your pride. Whether you're slow or falling apart, you'll still try your hardest to protect those you care about. I know that, and I'm sure your loved ones know that too. So even if you are a bird in your dreams, wake up and wiggle your toes. When the sun rises, it shines on you, and you shine brighter. <laughs> You've never seen me in the early morning. It doesn't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. <laughs> You're pretty silly, you know that? So I've been told. Before I can throw another joke his way, a dazzling light captures my attention. A shooting star? Startled, I turn towards it, only to be amazed at the sight that greets me. Up there, a blanket of stars stretched as far and wide as and illuminating the dark. Screenshot time. Wow, so many stars. Yeah, so pretty. It's been a while since I've seen this kind of sight. You can't see this type of thing in the city. You can see the stars, but it's too bright for me to see a cluster like this, even with my telescope. I motion toward the telescope, silently asking Luca if he wants to take a closer look, to which he obliges. This is the first time seeing something like this. I've always lived in the city, I've never had a telescope like this. It was a birthday present. I used to be into astrology, though not as much now, but I still have a love for the stars. Screenshot time. The moon is beautiful tonight, isn't it? <laughs> mm hmm. It sure is. I didn't read it. Wait. He lightly sways side to side to a song he sings in his head, a smile playing on his lips. I can't help but snicker a bit while staring back at him. The moon isn't out right now, but yes. Yes, it is beautiful. I can see it through your telescope. I saw some shooting stars too. You should make a wish before you miss your chance. Did you really? Did you already make a wish? Luca eagerly nods his head, still looking through my telescope. I assume he's still looking at the stars and the moon that I hadn't known was out until he told me. Uh huh. Uh huh. I made one for each shooting star I caught. I don't think that's how it works, Luca. What did you wish for? If I tell you, it won't come true, dummy. You're right. Sorry. I'll make my wish then. I turn to watch the sea of stars before closing my eyes to make my wish, my heart thudding in my chest at an insane pace. I wish for Luca to always be happy. Oh, that's a good wish. It's getting really late now. I guess we have to call our spontaneous camping trip to a successful end. Oh yeah, I have to be at the cabaret early tomorrow. Yup. I guess I'll see you in the afternoon for your shift, right? You go on ahead and get some rest. I'll meet you back at the tent. I give Luca a firm nod and we both stand to clean up as much as we can together. I disassemble my telescope and make my way towards the tent. I slip between the folds and get comfortable. I expected the hard ground to make my night a living nightmare, but surprisingly I'm not bothered by it. I'm happy that I can enjoy a good night's sleep while replaying the entire day in my dreams. I don't remember much after turning in. I fell asleep soon after my body settled in my sleeping bag. The next thing I know, Luca wakes me up and drops me off back at my place early the next morning. But I still feel drowsy. I'm filled with light and hopeful thoughts humming as I open the door to my apartment. I'm greeted at the door by my roommate, which is a bit strange. We're friendly enough, but usually at this time I expected them to be still asleep. <laughs> I thought you had a day off yesterday. I did. We just had a change of plans, that's all. How much did things change for you to have your first overnight trip with your boss? Look, I'm really tired and I'll have work tomorrow. We should talk first. I mean, what kind of friend would I be if I didn't tell you about my old boss, Kaneshiro? My old boss, Kaneshiro. My brows furrow. I didn't think the cabaret was your kind of scene. I didn't work at the cabaret. So you worked at the, the Golden Palace where he lays his head? Nope. Doesn't he own a clothing store? Technically, his sister does, but I've never worked at one of the fronts. 
You give up yet? The Mafia. Did no, you need didn't expect you to be the mafioso type. I'm going to bed. I'm too tired for this. You want me to tell the things I did for the dog of the character? I can read. Do you want me to tell you the things I did for the Don of the Kaneshiro crime family? I'm sorry? Here, me, Luke Kaneshiro is an evil and cruel mafia boss, someone I used to work for. Again, did it peg you for a mafioso, Rumi? Oh no, Luke is definitely a mafioso, but you? Ah, didn't peg you for the type. <laughs> I find myself sitting on the couch while only swallowing the poison I was being fed. Did anyone else mention Luca in this context? I would have ignored it. And uh, honestly, nah, that's not that big of a surprise, but bro. Anyway, let's continue. What do you mean he was your boss? What was your job? You did a lot of cruel things at first, but after a while, he just stopped. He didn't do anything a mafia boss would do. He didn't try to do anything someone in his position would be doing. Just that smiling face. I listen intently to what I'm being told. I can't force myself to interrupt him. The information itself was enough to stun me for a lengthy period of time. People are afraid of him. They were all scared of him, but they still loved him to death. The danger wasn't worth it. It was why I left. I was tired of fearing for my life and fearing for the ones I love. I guess he was too busy playing pretend. But he never was interested. But he was never interested in the reason as to why I left. It's not my concern anymore, but what about you? You fell for that puppy dog app, hook, line, and sinker. What if you get hurt? What will you do then? It's not an act and I didn't fall for anything. I won't get hurt, you have to trust me. He turns his back to me and walks toward towards the desk, reaching into a drawer and taking out a manila folder. It looks crisp and clean like new. When he turns his back to me, my anxiety grows. Read his dossier and try to say that again. I stole from one of his cabinets before I left. I'm sure you can understand what kind of man Luca Kaneshiro is with this. I do as I'm told, but I don't think I can actually defend Luca's character any further due to the fact that I don't know who he really is. It's shocking enough to finding out that someone I befriended who I thought I could trust is the ringleader of the mob. <laughs> that is one hell of a sentence, but alright. All those co-workers you're so buddy-buddy with are probably already laughing at you as you speak. I'm sure you're tired as you, you should go get some sleep. At the bed, we'll talk about it more later. It would be a miracle if I managed to get any sleep. Over the week, I thought I'd gone to Luluka. He got him closer. At least I thought so. Is it really just a childish game to him? How could he lie to me? I suppose this isn't something he could easily tell me, but then again, why bother with all the outings and hangouts? I, mean, I hope there's an option just to dispel this, like, real quickly. But really. I don't really want this to be able for going like narratively speak I don't really want this can I trust him can he not like plot point to be to go on for too long so hopefully this result I can resolve it quite quickly look at Kaneshiro do I really know the real you I can't sleep no matter how much I twist and turn and will myself and will myself to close my eyes and drift into the darkness I cannot get what he had told me out of my head. Luca, whom I befriended and have grown to trust, is a cruel leader of a mafia. And Rumi used to work for him. He seemed to fear for his life. Well, I trust Luca. I don't know what he's like as a mafia boss, but my friend, I trust him. Even with all that Rumi has told me, I still trust him. I wish Rumi would trust Luca too. I know he's not cruel. I know he's not evil. Eh, I just wish Rumi could see that too. Good morning, Valenciera. Oh, morning. As I step foot into the room, my roommate greets me with a nod, a glass of milk in his hand. Uh, have you thought about what we talked about? I have. And? You're very wrong about Luca. What part of he's literally a mafia boss you don't understand? Why did you work for him? I can tell you why I did, if that helps. Be my guest? Everyone at the cabaret always looks so content. I went there before I applied so I could see what would get me hired, and there was this jerk of a customer there. He spent a lot of money too, and do you know what he did? He said that he didn't want the filthy money from rotten person and told him to leave. Well, it's more like Sugma and don't bother coming back until you learn how to treat people, but basically yeah. <laughs> how did you know? Because that's what he did to anyone that tried to mistreat his people. Most people, really. So. 
I saw what happened when people didn't listen to that warning. I nodded, it was a fair point. I don't want to assume Luca could be danger couldn't be dangerous, but even knowing that doesn't change my belief. It's just that Rumi has only seen the darker side of Luca. Do you think he's bad because he's in the mafia? Mm, isn't that obvious? So am I a bad person too? Because I wouldn't take back the time I spent this week getting to know the, the real him. Honestly, no, no, being in the mafia is pretty a pretty bad thing to be, honestly. I don't think you have much of a case here, but go ahead. No, you're just too kind and trusting. You know I'm not. I'm so mean and evil, and I even asked him to bring me us breakfast. You did what now? As if by cue, the doorbell rings. I turn towards the roomy and faint a smile, as if my heart is threatening to jump out of my body. Rumi stares at me, his mouth agape. Right on time. My heart thunders against my chest as I open the door. Luca stands in the hallway with his signature smile, just as I remember him, happy and golden. Lies, Piro! I didn't think you want to see me this soon. You couldn't wait until we worked this afternoon? I hear my throat before giving a reply. Well, there's something important I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, what is it? You should come in. We can talk o we can talk over pancakes. Luca walks into the kitchen where Rumi stands still, holding a glass of milk in his hand. Luca halts. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. I guess you're not so acquainted with each other given your relationship used to be employer employee relationship. Rumi told me everything. Ah, oh, Lies Hero. I promise you, things aren't as simple as they seem. Of course it's not. I've seen the effect you had on other members. I've seen the way they'd fawn over you one moment and then cower behind each other the next. Rumi squints his eyes at Luca. I don't know what you've done, Luca Kaneshiro. And I don't know what kind of person you are, but I don't trust you. Not one bit. And why you just stay away from the Lies Hero? Rumi, uh, may I call you Rumi? I don't know what you think of me this way, but I promise you, I've never had never, I never will hurt anyone, especially not the Lions Hero. And why, why were they all so scared of you? Why were we scared of you? Luca looks out the kitchen window, his face solemn and blank. Papa Kaneshiro had always wanted me to be like him, the renowned mafia boss, respected by all. One of the other members would remember Lucy and I standing by him, watching him command the group. I could never stand it, never liked how afraid some of the members looked. All I wanted it was for them to be happy. I grew up with them after all, they were like family to me. Luca laughs, Rumi and I make eye contact across the table. I doesn't believe him entirely, I can tell, but he's listening. I never wanted to become a Don. Lucy was more suited for this role. But she, opened it to, but she had opened her own shop long before Papa retired, and she was too busy with it to be a mafia boss. Which meant I was left to, take, left to take over when he retired. It took some time to change how things were between me and my members, to build a relationship that's based on mutual respect and familiar bonds, not fear. And I doubt that's how the mafia works, but hey, what the hell? Rumi, last hero, you have to believe me. I have never hurt anyone, and I don't ever plan to. I want my family to be safe and happy. But, Rumi, please, have you ever seen me hurt someone? I step forward towards Rumi, taking his hand in mine. Rumi looks at me, concern marking, concern marking his features. But all the previous tension has otherwise left his shoulders. I smile at him. I trust him. Rumi sighs, thumb tracing light circles on the back of my hand. Despite everything, what he says makes sense. But I'm so worried about you hanging out so much with him. I literally chuckle at his sulky tone. Rumi, are you jealous? A light shade of pink dusts over his face. No, I just... Rumi stumbles over his words. I can't help but giggle seeing him so embarrassed. Rumi stands next to me and the music expression on his face. Rumi turns to him. Luca, I'm sorry about this. About doubting you and thinking you are a monster. Uh, about everything. It's all good, Rumi. If you want to work with me again, my door is always open. Well, I'll be on my way now. See you later, Valen Zero. As Luca turns to leave, Rumi calls out. Luca, wait! No, huh? What is it? Do you maybe want to stay for some pancakes? That was a quick change of an attitude, but okay.
Luca doesn't stay long after he joins us for breakfast. Soon after we all finish eating, he excuses himself. I saw him off the door before returning to the bedroom. A little after that, I hear a knock at the door. Come in! Rumi, Rumi comes into the room. I give him a smiling greeting and pat the empty space next to me on my bed, indicating for him to sit down. I just want to say sorry for spraying all this stuff about Luca on you. I was just so worried for you, and I was worried you were going to be unhappy working with him. It's fine. For all you know, I could have been killed, so that's fair. It's all good. As long as you know the truth now. I do. Thank you. And plus, you don't have to worry about me. As long as I'm with you, I know I'm safe. And I know I'm happy. Okay. So now we're hanging out with Rumi, but this is where I take my leave for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll probably be fought in New Vegas again next stream, continuing my cowboy playthrough, but we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I did take a two day break, mainly because, well, I just wanted a break, and also I did some stuff on YouTube, just re uploading some of the streams, so already done. But anyway, thank you all so much for your time, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. And you guys better have a good one, or I am coming for you, alright? Okay, have a good one. Bye bye. Let me just uh, handle this real quick. Let me just. Wait, did I already save? Uh. Arcade. There we go. Just in case. Alright, let me just mute this. And see y'all guys around. Bye bye. Here is the ending screen. Here we go. So, Bush, have a good one.